Will you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, make us to see. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is one of my favorite sermons to preach. I feel that God gave me these stories tied together with a little ribbon on it the first couple years of my ministry. And it has been meaningful for me. And I've heard that it's been meaningful to the people that I've shared it with and maybe even you. And if this is the second time or third time that you've heard this sermon, I hope that you enjoy it. Our sermon for today begins in John chapter 9 with the story of Jesus walking with his disciples along a road. While they walk down the road, the disciples notice that there's a man sitting by the side of the road and they come to learn that this man was blind from birth. Hearing his story, they turn to Jesus and they ask him a question that is very similar to something you might have thought yourself about somebody else's condition or maybe even your own. They turn to Jesus and they ask him, Jesus, was this man born blind because he sinned or was he in this condition because his parents sinned? And Jesus, hearing their question, he turns and he says something that they weren't expecting. John chapter 9, verse 3. Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of of the world. After Jesus said this, answering their question, Jesus does something that we don't necessarily think of Jesus doing when we think of Jesus. Usually when we think of Jesus, we think of this pristine, almost glowing man uh, with a well-kept beard, uh, a white flowing robe of some sort, uh, and uh, he, he might be even having a, holding a, a cute little lamb that's maybe partly smiling and he's partly smiling and it's just a nice cute little pristine Jesus. Uh, that may be the picture in your mind. It has been an image of Jesus in mine. But this Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, when he meets this man in this condition, saying that his condition is for the glory of God, Jesus does something incredibly unexpected. Jesus goes... Now, we don't <laughs> think of Jesus as going... But Jesus goes... And then he spits it on the ground. Jesus spits... And you might be thinking, well, I, I guess, I guess, yeah, Jesus spits. He's, he's, he's God, but he's also human. So he, he, he has a mouth, he has saliva. And I suppose, yeah, okay, Jesus spits. And we go, okay, we, after we've come to realize that our Jesus, Lord and Savior, spits, uh, then we keep reading in the story. And after Jesus spits on the ground, he then takes his hand and he reaches down and picks up that spit mud. And he begins going around in his hand, making spit mud. And with the spit mud, then Jesus does something more unexpected. He reaches over towards the man that's blind and he spreads that spit mud into his eyes. This is Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the Jesus that has redeemed us from, from sin and has come down from heaven, the, the light of the world, put spit in a man's eyes. And then Jesus, it says, told him, go watch, wash in the pool of Siloam. And the man went. Ah. 
maybe this is sh shaking your perception of who Jesus is. Uh, but this is the Jesus that we read about in the gospel, the good news about Jesus and uh, from the book, from the gospel writer, John. And the man that was blind, he, w he went down this windy street uh, in Jerusalem, down to this pool that was down at the, the lower end of the city. And he washed in the waters of the pool of Siloam. And when he washed, he could see. Wow. In another story of Jesus in John chapter 8, just one chapter before, it opens with Jesus in the temple teaching a crowd of people that had gathered there to hear him speak about God, about the kingdom, about scripture. And in the middle of his lesson, he is interrupted by another crowd, uh, a more, another crowd more like a mob of men dragging one woman in their midst. And they push this woman in front of Jesus and they point at her and they say to him, this woman was caught in the middle of the act of adultery. And according to the law, this woman should be stoned until she's dead. But what do you say, Jesus? Now, Jesus, looking at this crowd, looking at this mob, and looking at this woman, he responds in a way that none of them were expecting. How might you respond? Jesus, he doesn't even speak. The story says he just knelt down. And in the dust of the temple, the dust that came from the, the, would fall off the sandals of the people walking through it in that, in that the, the, the clumps of, of street dust and, and manure and whatever else has fallen onto that temple floor. Jesus takes his hand and he begins to write. Now we don't know what Jesus writes. <laughs> in the, the, the dust. It doesn't actually say. I think that what he does write must have been very powerful because when Jesus stands up, the people have been watching him. And Jesus, it says in John chapter 8, he says in verse 7, he stood, stands up and says, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. Verse 9, But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. And Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. This woman must have expected to feel a stone hit her after Jesus spoke. When Jesus said, Let the one without sin cast the first stone, she knew the kinds of people and the ways that they carried themselves in the community. She must have thought that these people were without sin because she knew herself as a sinner. And when she opened her eyes, she looks around and sees no one there to accuse her. And so she goes, she leaves, not having received the punishment that she knew that she deserved because of what Jesus did in the temple that day. These two stories that John records are so essential for my understanding about the good news of Jesus. In the first story we looked at, Jesus is not afraid to get his hands dirty to save a man that was born into a, a situation that he did not deserve. It was handed to him, that was his lot, 
And that's the life that he was living in. And Jesus was not afraid to get his hands dirty to restore him to wholeness. And in this, this second story, Jesus is again not afraid to get his hands dirty in order to, to redeem this woman from this, the choice that she has made to save her from her own bad choices, her own mistakes, to bring her into wholeness and rest, restoration. There's another story of, of God doing something very, very special with his hands and dirt. <laughs> in the beginning, where we know in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. But in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, right at the beginning, we have this story of God walking along this earth that he has just created. Everything is perfect. He has made the, 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 the land and the sea. He separated the waters from the waters. He has put in, uh, on the land green trees and plants to grow. He's filled the sea with, with swimming things, the sky with flying things, and the land with crawling things. And then finally he stops by this, this clay bank. Uh, assumed by a by the side of a river and he bends down and he scoops up the clay and he begins forming he takes his own hands and he forms humankind and he forms uh, Adam's head and his chin and his ears he must have had fun with the ears huh and, and he forms his neck and his shoulders and his arms and his hands and all the way down to his tiny toe and he forms Adam and and he and then it says that he breathes into Adam his own breath of life and it says that man became a living soul he does the same with Eve and he brings them together and this is his joy and he looks at everything and he says, it is very good. God created us by getting his hands dirty. How much more is he willing to get his hands dirty for you and for me? This same Jesus that was in the beginning with God, that created us with God, this same Jesus that was with this blind man by the side of the road, and this woman that was caught in the middle of, of the worst decision of her life, this same Jesus that was, that was there at, at that last dinner with his disciples, that washed their feet, their filthy feet, this same Jesus who, whose his own hands had, had done all of these things, we then nailed to a cross. This same Jesus is willing to get his hands dirty for you, for me, by putting them into the most dirty, disgusting, revolting, appalling, offensive place in the entirety of the universe, which is inside of our hearts. Because in our hearts, we have, we have cherished, we have stored, we have preserved offensive things like pride. In our hearts, we have stored their unforgiveness. In our hearts, we have bitterness, hatred, prejudice, preference. We have in our hearts these things that have never existed before sin. And these things that God has come to redeem us from and to cleanse us from. And Jesus is not afraid to get his hands dirty even there. Sometimes it feels like in order to come to Jesus, we first need to clean our heart. 
that somehow we've got to make this heart exactly pristine, perfect, so that way the pristine Jesus in our head can finally be acceptably uh, invited into our lives. But the Jesus of the Bible, this Jesus, the real one that does all of these things, wants to get in there himself. And he's not afraid to get his hands dirty because he loves you. This is the Jesus that I preach to you. This is the Jesus that you can trust in. This is the Jesus that you can invite into your heart for the first time or for the hundredth. Will you invite this real an unpredictable, wonderful Jesus into your heart with me in prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you for being the God that makes us out of dirt. Thank you for doing beautiful things in our hearts. Lord, you see our hearts. You know what's in there. We need your hands to fix the kind of muck that we've gotten ourselves into, the kind of things that we have grown up in, the things that we've found ourselves in. We need you to cleanse us from these things. Thank you for being the real God that is not afraid to get your hands dirty to make us or to redeem us. Thank you for being standing there waiting for us to invite you in. I invite you in, God. Thank you for loving me so much that you're not afraid to get your hands dirty with me. We, we get to pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whether you have done something terrible, you have made terrible decisions in your life, and you don't know what your end will be, or whether you've found that your life is the consequence of other people's bad choices, or you feel stuck and you don't know why, remember, my friend, Jesus can be trusted. <laughs>